Loving Adults, a scene-by-scene -scene review. Hello everyone and welcome to Anonymous Pandemonium. Today, I will be talking about the Danish infidelity thriller movie Loving Adults. If you haven't watched it yet and don't want spoilers, please stop watching this now also. My opinion of this film might be different from yours and I respect that. What worked for you might not work for me and vice versa. This is a 1 hour and 45 minute film that I will discuss scene by scene and it will take a lot of time, so you better subscribe. Again, spoiler alert. According to commonsensemedia.org, Loving Adults is the story of the breakdown of Christian, Dar Salim, and Leonora's, Sonia Richter. Marriage that begins with Leonora's suspicion that Christian is having an affair. Christian is indeed having an affair with an up-and-coming employee, Xenia, Sus Wilkins. Xenia is in turn pressuring Christian to choose between the two women in his life once and for all. His decision leads him to make the biggest mistake of his life, and it's one that only gets worse no matter how he tries to fix it, ignore it, or just move past it. I have watched this movie without any idea what the story is except from the preview from Netflix as well as the description. The opening credits made it sound like it is a horror movie but it isn't. From the start of the movie, I was given a foreshadowing clip of Christian, the husband, hitting Leonora with a van as she jogs along her usual route unaware. Let me just say, as much as I love other movies that has a narrator on it. I was not a fan of this one. It made the movie sound cheesy to me and I don't know why. The movie then backtracks to three days before the accident, where in the middle of the night, the couple woke up to Christian's phone notifying that he got a text message. One thing I don't like about this is why would both wake up to a phone that did not even made a sound except for the vibration? Are they such light sleepers? I'm a heavy sleeper so I wouldn't know. My phone can ring all day without waking me up let alone a vibrating sound. Anyway, the couple got into an argument that made Leonora pressure to let her see the text and Christian giving the lame excuse that it was his co-worker and the said co-worker was having an affair and he did not feel comfortable showing the text to Leonora because she knows the girl. This fight ended in Christian, all hell bent on not showing the phone, threw his phone across the room. If that didn't say suspicious, I don't know what else. The movie then proceeds to the next scene where the narrator explains that Christian is an engineer and he partnered with Patrick, the co-worker he used an excuse on the night of the fight to create a construction company, and that Leonora, was a musician, a talented violinist who won some competitions and was accepted to a music conservatory. She stopped because her son Johan got seriously ill but is now getting better. The next scene is your typical happy family scene where Johan is asking Christian to drive him to somewhere and Christian giving an excuse that he has a lot on his plate so Leonora presented herself. Leonora then apologized to Christian for their fight the night before. Leonora then suggested to have the busted phone fixed because she is going out anyways to wash her car but Christian declined. During the drive Johan asked Leonora if they can pick up Martha who is Johan's friend. Leonora looks happy while seeing his son interact with Martha. Now back to Christian. He is at work and was greeted by Patrick. He was told that the IRS asked to see their accounts. Their discussion looks like they were doing something shady. This part also confirms that Christian is having an affair with his co-worker, Xenia, who turns out, texted Christian before the fight giving an ultimatum to Christian to pick between her and Leonora. Xenia expressed frustrations because she wants to be the only woman in Christian's life and she wants to have kids. They ended up kissing in the construction site. You ugh. This is too cliche for me. Meanwhile, Leonora is at the car wash wanting only to pay for the gold wash which only costs 79 kroner but got peeved off when told that she needs to buy the car wash card first which costs 100 kroner minimum. Since the person behind her is getting impatient, she decided to buy the 200 kroner card. Remember this because this card is important to the plot. Leonora then called the phone service company to try to retrieve the text messages from Christian's phone but was denied by the service operator. She then checked Christian's Facebook account and looked through his pictures until she saw his photo with Xenia. She immediately felt suspicious. The couple got ready to go to the company party and during the party, Leonora can't stop glancing Xenia's way. It didn't help that during Christian's speech, 
he mentioned Xenia, praised her and asked her to join him up the stage. The party progressed and when Leonora noticed Christian is missing, she went upstairs to Christian's office and saw Xenia and Christian having sex. Xenia saw her and made eye contact. Leonora did not mention it on the drive home but was clearly distraught. The following morning, Christian was with his friend, Kim. They were making a floating fire pit and while doing so, Christian asked Kim about his divorce with his wife Annette. Kim said that it was for the best and both him and Annette is happy. Kim advised Christian that he should do it sooner. Christian tried to communicate that he wants a divorce but Leonora did not allow him to divorce her. She said that she knows about the affair. She also threatened Christian that if he divorces her, she will report the scam that Christian was doing in his company. Leonora said that she refused to be like Annette who works now at the grocery store. Now, imagine if you had to give up your career to take care of your family, and now your husband wants to divorce you and had the nerve to suggest that you should go back to your old career, when you both know that it's too late for that. Turns out that Christian and Patrick manipulated the exchange rate to get more money and they can go to jail if found out. And Xenia's at it again pressuring Christian to be with her and of course, Christian assured her. Xenia asked Christian to meet her mom. Kim advised Christian to talk to Leonora's old friends to convince her that the divorce is a good idea. Christian decided to go to Leonora's old friend, Cassandra, going with Kim's advice unaware that Leonora was following him. Christian found out from Cassandra that Leonora's ex-boyfriend, Mike died and implied that Leonora pushed her ex off a cliff just when he was about to break up with her for another girl, Sonia. He then called Sonia, asking to confirm if Cassandra's story is true but Sonia is not sure and he found out that Sonia's not really a credible source because of her contradicting statements. And Leonora's music teacher confirmed Leonora's alibi at that time. Christian went to meet Xenia's mom, still unaware that Leonora's following him. At home, Leonora tries to kick out Christian but Christian is asking for assurance that she will not report him for the scam. He then mentioned what he found out about Mike and Leonora just shrugs it off. Leonora then turned the table, pressuring Christian to call Xenia and break up. Christian called Xenia but as soon as she answered, he hung up saying he can't. Leonora made him switch cars with her so she now drives the Mercedes. She also threw him out. Christian devised a plan to kill Leonora. He left his phone in the office, got white van, run Leonora over with the van on her usual jogging route. He proceeds with this plan and when he hit Leonora and saw that she was still alive, he backed up and ran her over again. He went and go back to the office and pretend that he has been there the whole time. He made sure that someone from the office sees him to solidify his alibi. He went home late and was in a way traumatized or guilty of what he'd done. He thought that he was hallucinating when he saw Leonora talking to him. It turns out that Leonora changed her usual route which made him think who was the woman he ran over with the van. The next morning, News broke that a woman was hit and run on Leonora's jogging route. During a party in their house, the police went to the couple's house and asked them questions about what they know regarding the hit and run case. The police did not get any useful information from them. And if you have watched this film already, you'll know that the narrator and the police is the same guy. Xenia keeps texting Christian during the party but he just ignored her. Christian went to the memorial site of the hit and run victim and due to guilt, he decided to go to the police station to turn himself in. The police officer in the station was busy and asked him to wait. While waiting, he got a text from Johan and he saw the news about the hit and run and it mentioned that the suspect might be Romanian and fled to a different country. Christian decided to leave the police station. Now, I know this is a slow burn but here comes the exciting part. Leonora tried to have her car washed and use her car wash card. Remember, she had the 200 kroner card and got the gold wash the last time. So she expected that the card still has 121 kroner. She was then shown the CCTV footage on when the card was used the second time and saw that it was Christian in a white van. She confronted him and threatened to report him and drove away, making Christian believe that she is on her way to the station to report him. The police went to their house and asked Christian what he knows about the accident. 
he just repeated what he saw on the news. The police suspects him but they don't have any evidence. Leonora saw it as a way to blackmail him into killing Xenia, as an assurance that Christian will not kill her. She also admitted that she killed Mike and solidified her alibi with her music teacher by playing a recording of her playing the violin making the teacher think that she was practicing the whole time. Their plan is to go to a spa hotel to create an alibi and while they are there, Christian will sneak out of the hotel and go to Xenia to kill her. Leonora will be staying in the hotel room to create an illusion that Christian is with her in the hotel room by ordering room service, while the bathroom faucet is on, pretending that Christian is taking a bath. She pushed it further by playing a recording of Christian's voice when the room service comes so the staff can hear Christian's voice just like what she did to Mike. Christian went to Xenia's house and made up with her. Using Christian's phone, Leonora sent a text to Xenia, basically breaking up with her. Before Xenia reads the text, Christian proceeds to have sex with her. Christian was lying in bed with Xenia when she got up to go to the bathroom. When she got to the bathroom, Leonora was there to stab her. Christian saw her and she told Christian I know you couldn't do it. A few days after that, the police was looking for Xenia and questioned Christian, but as planned, the couple had a solid alibi. The police then started a search for Xenia's body, assuming that she is most likely already dead. They are at the woods right across the lake from the couple's party where they will light up the fire pit Christian and Kim created. Leonora and Christian saw the police with their sniffing dogs across the lake and went on full alert super anxious to light up the fire pit. Christian went to the boat to light up the fire and Kim joins him. When they got to the floating bonfire, Kim mentions that something reeks and that an animal might have died in there. As soon as they light it up, the sniffing dogs lost the trail of scent but the police aka the narrator stood there watching the fire from across, suspecting that the body might be there. Let me interrupt for a second here. Wouldn't be the scent of a rotten body be more strong if you burn it? Or do I know wrong? Okay, so back to the movie. The people from the party was looking at the fire and one of the old ladies there was using binoculars. Christian borrowed the binoculars and surprise, surprise, Xenia's body is burning there. In the end, the narrator and his bride-to-be daughter sum up their story by wondering what could have happened to Xenia's remains. Now here's what I think. This is a solid movie and it kept me guessing. I like the alibi part because it's so clever in my opinion. There are some stuff that's questionable to me, like why would both couple wake up to a vibrating phone and would a rotting body eliminate its odor by burning it? Christian and Xenia are both unlikable to me because I do not see any redeeming factor to their characters. With Leonora, she seems like a cold-blooded person. I wouldn't have went the way she went. Overall, if you want to watch an infidelity thriller, you can watch this, just know that there are some cliché scenes. That's it and thank you so much for watching. I hope you like this video and please let me know in the comments if you have any question or if you want to suggest a movie to review next. I hope every one of you stays safe, as always.